right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you. This is a short video just to inform you that we have our uh, Spanish translation for the deception of Allah is out. And as you see, uh, we are going to show it to you on the screen in Amazon, and actually the link is down the video. Uh, so if you know somebody speaks Spanish, if you have a Spanish friends, and you know, even if you don't know anyone, I would like to see people downloading this video, share it with their friends, uh, put the title in Spanish so those who speak Spanish they can see it and they can know about it. Now, our book in Spanish is very, very important because Muslims are targeting Spanish community heavily, trying to fool them and make them believe that Islam is a perfect religion. So, uh, I believe this is maybe the first book of its kind, uh, sharing such an important information. And actually, I wanted to have the book in Spanish from a long time ago. But thanks to God, like, you know, finally we got somebody who cared to help and to translate the book. So first, I want to say thank you for the person who did uh, translate the book and did it voluntarily without even charging a penny. So I'm very thankful for that person, and I pray that the Lord will uh, will, will will reward him or whoever he is uh, for what uh, he or she did. So uh, please inform your friends. And again, you know, if you see how how uh, Muslims they are making uh, uh, TV series, movies, um, programs, and trying to present Islam as a perfect beautiful society and perfect way of lifestyle and those poor people who speak Spanish they have no idea what Islam is about and as you know for me I do my program in English so it's very important that we can get those who speak Spanish uh, sharing and telling the truth and this is a book no kidding it is a disaster it is a disaster those who have the book, they knew how how full this book with information. Actually, uh, it's too much information to the point. If you really study it hard, I mean, if you study and you learn this information, and you are able to memorize them too, you, I say to you, no Muslim can debate you. No Muslim whatsoever. Uh, so... I'm right, really happy that we have this book uh, finished and it's out in Amazon. Uh, actually, we published it almost uh, 10 days ago, but they have a problem with the publishing. It was published in the wrong location and there are different sections. So we waited for them until they uh, fix this issue. Uh, now, this, uh, this uh, translation is made by a very, uh, uh, I mean, the person who did the translation is very very good translator uh, which mean uh, you would have a perfect Spanish translation for the book so it's really really good uh, to have uh, and for sure we need your help the same as we need your help for all other books like French Dutch German uh, all the books which we Swedish uh, translated by many of you, uh, but yet, uh, because I don't speak those languages, I don't have really communication with those uh, society. So always we encourage you to tell your friends about other translation too. Now, uh, even if you speak English, by the way, and you watch uh, my videos, but if you are a, a person who his first language is Spanish, still this book is very good to have because that would be good for your family who maybe they are not good in English, all right? Uh, tell your friends, tell your family, post it in your Facebook. The link is down in the, in the info of uh, the video. Um, and by your help, I am sure that many, they will be happy to have it. And please, after you finish reading the book, don't forget to make a, a, an honest review. Don't say it's fantastic if it's not. Now, we have a lot of false review made by Muslims trying to make the video, the book uh, look bad, but it doesn't matter actually. When a Muslim person, you can tell right away, by the way, uh, when a Muslim person review my book. He didn't buy the book, but yet he can make a review. Uh, a Chinese language, I wish I have somebody to do Chinese, until now we don't have any Chinese translation. 
uh, we wish to have more languages come in, I hope soon. And uh, I hope more translation will come to the Six and Allah book, uh, which is two volume. And I believe it's very good to have it translated to. Anyway, you know, those who they are doing volunteer work, I appreciate them. I cannot ask for more than this. Uh, they are wonderful, and, uh, um, you know, they do it voluntarily, which is amazing. Uh, anyway, like, you know, our video is, is very important, but having books uh, in your library is always a good handy thing to have, uh, especially it can grab reference easy when you need them, you know. Uh, right now I'm working in three more books and one of them is a translation of the Quran and you know one of the funny things about translation of the Quran uh, each time even me who speak Arabic we try to find you a translation to read we find that Muslim translation is far away from the truth and trust me translation is not made by mistake far away from the truth it's made in purpose far away from what it says because the point of the translation is not to translate the point of the translation of those translator is to promote Islam so they don't really translate the Quran they are trying to promote their belief so if you go to chapter 4 verse number 34 as an example where it says beat your wife and then you will find uh, the translator he says you uh, first and then second and then third, there's no first and second and third in the Quran. <coughs> and then you will you will find the translator saying, uh, uh, "Beat her lightly," or even there is a translation made by a, a woman who converted to Islam. She said that uh, uh, "Beat her" here is to stay away from her. I mean, they try to uh, to fool you in any way, in any mean they can. Uh, you can click at the, at the link, my friend, in Amazon, and you can see all the information about how many pages. And actually, in this book, I did not uh, add Arabic text uh, for a very simple reason, to try to make it to lower the cost. Because, you see, the, the bigger, when we add the Arabic text, that will make the book really huge, you know? And then, if you make it in Kindle, Kindle make the Arabic look really bad, which is not it's useless. So I decided not to add Arabic because anyway, the one uh, anyway, the one who read it don't speak Arabic anyway. I added the Arabic in the original one as a proof of reference, so nobody can say, oh, "Oh, he's lying." You know what I mean? So we have everything there. But uh, uh, the Dutch book might have issue because we don't have shop using credit card. Well, uh, 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 Geoff, I thought these days everybody have a credit card. I don't know. I mean, if you want to buy from internet, you have to have a credit card these days. You know, and this is the only way. And if you don't have a, a credit card, you can ask a friend who have a credit card to buy it for you. Give him the cash, he order it for you. And the good thing about uh, Amazon, uh, most, especially in Europe, I mean, you get it for free. If you live in USA, or even I think in Mexico, if you have a Prime uh, account with Amazon, it's for free shipping too. So Amazon is really good. I mean, and uh, the shipping is very fast because they don't ship from, let us say you live in France. They don't ship the book from America. They ship it from Europe. I think they, sh they ship it from Pittsburgh, uh, from, yeah, in the, what do you call it? Luxembourg, Luxembourg. So, uh, or from Germany. I don't know, like they depend on the location. So uh, you receive it very fast, very easy, and the cost of shipping is very easy. All right? Uh, yeah, and if you buy it from the UK, you get it from the UK. It's not going to be shipped from USA. So it's fast, it's uh, reliable, because if you, if you order a book and you don't receive it, you can complain and they will give you the money back. As simple as that. You know? Uh, so Amazon is a very good, trustworthy, uh, site for for buying and that's why I like to uh, to use them uh, uh, Thank you uh, Christian Knight and thank you little for the donation. I appreciate your support uh, 
Yeah, and I, you know, and I hope soon we will have like uh, we have a, a, a translation working in the Portuguese language, which is be good. I mean, look at this. My books is almost translated to how many languages now? That's fantastic if you think about it. You know, it's really good, and uh, I really appreciate those people. The Indonesian translation. There is a group of uh, Christians working in it. And we will have it as soon to finish it. We have to wait. All right? We have to wait. Now, God is good, my friend. God is good. But, you know, for me, I saw how, mu how much the Muslims, they're targeting the Spanish society. And in Spanish, they are left ready without any support. Like now, I make my videos in English. But it's not my fault. I mean, I don't speak Spanish. I wish I, if I speak Spanish, I would make hundreds of videos in Spanish. If I speak Chinese, I will I will make a channel just for Chinese, Spanish. I wish I speak all languages, but I am doing my best in a language I speak, what I can do. You know what I mean? Uh, I can translate in Romanian if you want. Yeah, sure, why not? To contact me in Skype, and we can talk about how you can do it, my friend. Um, Buma. Contact me in, in Skype. Uh, Bumba, sorry. Uh... The more translation we have, the the better uh, is for for everybody. And actually, uh, me myself, when I read the Deception of Allah, you see, when I made this book, I did not really make it to be as a. I don't know how to describe how the book is made. I mean, it's like a person who open his head, his library in his head, and he start throwing things inside. So. It's very easy to, it's not like, it's, it's it's not really, I mean, it's not really connected as if you you have to follow. If you miss a page, you miss everything. It's the same as the Quran. The Quran is disconnected story, which means Quran, because the Quran is a stupid story, there's no, discon there's no connection between the verse before and the verse after it. The, my book, it's very smart made, but is disconnected, which means, uh, okay, this uh, chapter I'm talking about, let's say, uh, women. And this chapter after it have nothing to do with women. It's uh, something else. So the book is made uh, uh, ideas based on, like, based on idea at the time. One idea at a time. And then we bring all the reference, which will teach you about this idea. You know what I mean? So, uh, and this is why the book is really very successful. I mean, if you go to the Deception of Allah, the, the original book, you will find how much the Muslims are really upset from that book, extremely upset. Uh, Shabir Ali, he bought my book to learn from it. And I challenge Shabir Ali to say that we are not, you know, it's not really, a, it's not, a, 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 one of you actually asked me in the chat in the other day, your book is verified by who? My friend, my book is verified by Muhammad himself. Because everything I say there is coming from their books. You know what I mean? Everything there is made by their books. You will find in my book the reference, the name of the book, the name of the the, the, the number of the page, uh, uh, and and the the text. What do you want more? So my book is not like not like a normal book who is making my opinion about Islam. No, it's not like that. My book is a driven by their opinion about Islam, which will give you a conclusion. You know what I mean? Like, if I want to prove to you that women in Islam is not respected, if this is my idea to deliver to you, I'm not saying to you, Islam does not respect women and then it's nice to meet you and bye-bye. No, you will see all the reference where Muhammad said this, the Quran says that, etc., etc., etc. And then it's up to you to come with the conclusion you think fit with those reference. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Albanian, yeah. There is there is somebody now is working in the Albanian translation. Yeah, we have somebody working in the Albanian. Uh, we have a Muslim saying Islam is the truth. I mean, Islam is the truth in which way? How in the world Islam can be the truth? God who promised me a lot of women for sex. I mean, isn't it all? this is satanic the first thing satan he do to do what i mean what is the what is the method of satan i mean how clear it is islam is satanic if islam from heaven from god from the true god why god want to seduce me god, god don't seduce us 
tempt us by women and why does God he focus in sex what 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 the point of this God why does God he don't promise me to go to heaven and it is heaven I will have a beautiful life holiness life with no sin you know why it is about sex why everything in this in this cult is about sex so when you say to me Islam is the only truth well, what is the truth in sex in heaven what is the truth about God and sex what is the connection between God and sex you see sex is made for a reason so we can produce from our kind to have a family so we can reproduce children but it's in heaven of Allah there's no children nobody is going to give it children so what the sex for why is it where everything is about sex Muhammad he will have the power of 4,000 men and why Muhammad need a, I mean if you have the power of 4,000 men does that make you better than me I mean this is silly this is stupid when your God he promised you to be to have the power of 100 men in heaven in sex what does that mean it's this is silly it, the promises themselves not only they are uh, uh, satanic they are silly and stupid you know what I mean, guys if if I am if I am from God and then I come to you and I say if you believe in me I will make your penis endless shouldn't you laugh at me I mean be honest with yourself shouldn't you laugh at me what kind of a promise from what kind of God he promised me endless penis and what I will do with the endless penis I mean if the penis is six six meters not enough I'm going to use it as a pipeline am I going to use it for like uh, for oil in this study I mean what 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 the point of having in this penis so when a Muslim he says to us Islam is the truth I, I, I die laughing I mean why people don't use their brain Islam is the truth in what when you're a prophet he promised you to have a woman her ass is one mile I mean what about half mile and what if my wife she's sit in the top of me and what the point of having one mile ass I mean what, the, what I mean why is, why size is so is, uh, so matter in Islam you know when I was a kid uh, we have a <clears throat> uh, we have a song in Arabic it says that there's a woman uh, she is so beautiful to the point the camel could not carry her and when I was a kid I sing the song but I never know what this really mean I mean she is so beautiful to the point the camel could not carry her I mean what the connection between her beauty and the camel is not able to carry her but then when I grow up and start studying and learning I noticed that the Arab in the in, in, in the old days when a woman she is very very big you know like today you call them overweight but you are talking here about very very much overweight Wait. so if a woman she is over over overweight at that time she is the beautiful woman if you are skinny you are sick at that time if you are skinny nobody will marry you it's mean you are not healthy you want to give give uh, give uh, give healthy babies so the more you are big the more you are beautiful so the, the song was saying that uh, 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 this woman so beautiful so beautiful to the point the camel could not stand up and take her up all right so and then I start understanding the mentality of Muhammad making promises to his followers that the wife she would have an endless uh, she would have a one mile ass uh, when, when somebody come to me and he says to me I have a religion and my religion it's called Islam and this religion is called Islam it's the best it's the truth what is the truth about it a God who wanna uh, he 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 written my fate before I'm created, and then he will punish me for my fate, which he wrote for me. I mean, how silly! What is the truth about Islam? It's very easy, by the way, to defeat Islam. But the, you know, sadly, most of people they don't want to use their brain. I mean, people they just okay, Islam. I like Islam, brother, because Islam be, uh, teach one God. Well, say, uh, there's there's uh, people believe in Satan as God. Uh, believing in one God is not something new. The Christian believe in one God. The Jews believe in one God. So what? There's a church. It's called the Church of Satan. They worship Satan as God, one God. So, but the question is, is that God is exist? Muhammad he used a God his name is Allah as a puppet for his sexual desire for his war 
for his uh, demand uh, to take what he want. Hmm? Uh, Muhammad Zakaria he says a Christian version of heaven sound boring. Hmm? Well, let me uh, let me tell you, Muhammad. If a Christian heaven, which is holy heaven, is boring for you, then you fit more in Islamic heaven. You are obviously, you are a Las Vegas style heaven, God. But this is satanic heaven. I agree with you. The, uh, uh, based on the way you think, the Christian heaven is boring. Why? Because you, there is no boobs, there is no uh, asses, there is no boys for sex, there is no wine and drinking, and you know, this is Las Vegas, you want a bar. Because simply you are following Satan. Uh, search for debate TV, my friend. Okay, I will. I will add you. No problem. <clears throat> and here you notice, by the way, if God is God. Why God cannot make me happy without promising me a lot of sex? I mean, he's God. If you say that uh, uh, Christian heaven is boring, and I agree with you in the way you think that you are, uh, because you follow Satan, you think this is boring. Like if I say to somebody, when I go to Las Vegas, and when I go to the church, which one is boring? For, for sure, he would say, a church is boring. You know, Las Vegas, women wearing short skirt, gambling i mean here we go this is what you want but the fact is it is for me it's not boring it's fantastic because happiness for me have different measurement happiness for you have different measurement you are looking for something and we are looking for something and because what you are looking for is different from what we are looking for so your target heaven is satanic. For Satan, this is what Satan will say to a Christian. The Christian heaven is boring. What? Jesus, he said, there is no sex in heaven. Why you want to go there? In my heaven, I have a lot of women for you. <laughs> so... <clears throat> When you say to me what you said, we have to agree with you, Satan, that your heaven is more interesting for satanic people. The heaven of God, happiness have nothing to do with sex. And sex always is something temporary. It's a physical temptation. God, he can provide us with a lot more higher and beautiful happiness. You see, when a woman she hold her child between her arm you can describe how happy she is to have him but there's no sex there there's no sex that's from god that is from god there's no sex she's not holding her holding her husband she is not holding a lover she is not holding a boyfriend she is holding her little baby, five kilograms of meat. That's all. But for her, it meant the whole world. That is God, my friend. So if you don't understand the love of God, that's because you are following Satan. So if God can make a woman happy to hold a child who is her own, why God cannot make us all of us happy without sex? If God can make us happy to see somebody is saved, you know, God, he gave us emotion, which is beautiful. People, they watch a, a, a series, a drama, and they cry. You see, you know why? Because God, he put passionate and love inside your heart. That is love, my friend. There's no sex. So because you are a Muslim, you thought always that only happiness is your belly and your penis. That is your religion. And this is why we reject Islam. You see, when, the, when they asked the Messiah about what they will be in heaven, he said, he and she, they will not get married. 
they will be the same as angels many Christians do not understand really what does that mean you see angels are free free from needs so look what Islam does to you Islam make you a slave of need the more you go close to Allah the more you will became addicted to sex food and vagina the more you are close to Jesus the more you are free from food you will not need food in heaven you will be the same as angels you will not need sex we have different level of love and spirituality and amazing life you are free my friend Islam make you a slave addicted to sex 70 years of orgasm Muhammad he said a man will have and actually the video previously we made we showed the reference why Muhammad is promising us 70 years orgasm he made you slave of sex to the point you spend 70 years for just a little stupid orgasm you know what I mean how angels are free of needs when Satan and his angels army yeah. no you see no because now the angels decide not to be free of needs you see God he gave a free will he created them as angels but because now they decide not to be free they wanted more this is a decision they made Satan he made his own decision but angel is a free of his need you do not need to eat you do not need to drink you do not you don't get sick you don't you know he he been given eternal life so yes he is a free of his need but it doesn't mean that he is a free of his need he don't have a free will that's why he's free he have a free will so there's angels who choose to obey God with the free will and there's angels they choose to disobey because they want more if you read the Bible, you will see that Satan, he wanted to replace God. His rebellion. So my friend, God, he created them to be free. And we will be the same as angels, but we will be the same as the good angels. We are not the same as a Satan. We are free. The more you are into slavery, huh? the, more, the more you are far from freedom. No, Satan in Islam is not an angel. He is a genie who uh, supposedly, actually he did not disobey Allah. Allah, he ordered the angels to bow down to Adam and then uh, Satan did not bow down. So Allah said to him, why don't bow down? And then Satan, he said to him, you created him from mud. I created me from fire. Why I will buy him better than him. So Allah, he cast him out of heaven supposedly. That's all. So in Islam, Shaitan is not an angel. Remember that. He is a genie. Muslim, they believe in genie. And don't mix between genie and demon. Genie are not demons. Some Christians, they think that when Muslim, they say genie, they think they believe in demon. Muslim do not believe in demon. All right? They don't. Demon are not genie. Demon are a spirit, evil spirit, bad spirit. Uh, genie are creatures who they are made from fire. And Muslim believe some of them they are, uh, uh, you know, uh, some of them they are Christians, some of them they are Jews, some of them they are Hindus, uh, some of them they are uh, atheists, you know, that's what they believe. That's what they believe. So, but you know, like, uh, uh, because some Christians they don't really know anything about Islam. So, uh, Muslim they use some names and we cannot find a name uh, like. Uh, something equal to it so we mix between them so we say almost and believe in in demon no they don't genie are not demon all right uh, anyway th this is what we do in our videos is to 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 make it clear for people that we cannot mix don't mix between the Islamic cult and what they believe like when a Muslim he says we are against adultery uh, uh, adultery in Christianity is different different from adultery in Islam maybe it's the same word yes but it's not the same value a Muslim he is allowed to do adultery actually in Islam 
Muhammad, he don't consider kissing, touching, even having sex with wrong location. Like you know, a woman, I don't want to go in details. Uh, a man touching her in her private part, a woman she is touching you in your private part. In Islam, this is not adultery. This is not adultery. So you might say, uh, Muslim, they say uh, we punish the one who is adulterous, but Muslims they have different level of adultery, and not only that. Uh, there's a story of a guy whose name is Nabhan Tamar. He came to Muhammad and he said to him, "There's a woman. She came to me, and she is obviously married. I told her get inside my store, and I have better stuff for you, which means we can play." So she get in, and he said, "And I did with her everything except intercourse." Muhammad, he said, this is called a lemon and no problem. A lemon. So in Islam, a lemon is not considered something serious. It's not a serious crime. It's not a serious crime. It is not even a sin. It's like a fault. You know? It's a fault, and uh, there is no punishment for it. While in in you know in Christianity, in Jesus he said, "If you wish a woman, she is not yours. You committed adultery." What kind of a prophet he says? Kissing a woman, she is married. Touching her private part, playing with her, and having orgasm. As long as you don't have intercourse, it's okay. What kind of God he says that? If you go to chapter 52, uh, verse number 32, you will find that reference. For the one is asking. Actually, I can get it in the, uh, in the translation. Look at this funny translation. What do you say here? It is. Uh, you will see here, they translate this that Allah, He, you know, uh, the, the believers, they avoid the, you know, the big sin, except the small ones. Okay, what is a small one? You go, go and read the story, you will find the story is that if you have a woman, she is married. And you kiss her, you play with her body, you touch her private part, she make you come, you make her come. This is called lemma. It's fine. This is the, this is the this is the ethic of Islam. This is this is Muhammad talking. All right. So don't mix between Christianity and Islam. And and this is the problem. You know, some people they think that if a Muslim he says Islam is against adultery, that's mean oh Muslim really they are against adultery. They are not. Muhammad he allowed Muslim to do as you know muta. What is muta? Muta is temporarily sex contract for, for just for the purpose of sex, not for the purpose of love or no, just any woman, any woman. You meet with her and you like her, you like to have sex with her. If she agree to take off her panty for uh, wages you agree upon, then good for you. So here we go, they use the word adultery. They say we punish people for adultery, but in Islam you can do adultery, but you have to do it in the legal way. So Muhammad, what he did, he did legalize adultery. Actually, there's a verse in the Quran saying clearly that force not your sex slaves to do prostitution unless they agree, which means he legalized. Look what Muhammad said. I hope we will not lose electricity because we have a storm here. Force not your slave girls into prostitution. If they choose, if they choose not to do it, but if they, you know, which means if, if they agree, it's okay. And if you force them, there is no punishment too. There is no punishment for a Muslim he force, if he force his, his slave to do prostitution is legal. 
uh, Rob, he never read the Bible. No, I read the Bible all, every day, but I don't like my, to mix the Holy Word of God with this garbage. I prefer to keep the Holy Words together. When I, when I read the Quran and Islamic cult, I have to wear heavy gloves. So I cannot touch the Bible and then read this. My topic is dirty. I keep my my Bible away from it. Uh, and you know, look at the Muslims, how funny they are. This, this Muslim is upset. Why Christian prince don't treat his Bible? You know, if we read the Bible, they make fun of us. You know, as they say to you, your Bible is corrupt, or your Bible is a lie. But now, because they try to get rid of me, I mean, Christian prince, go and read your Bible, man. Leave, leave, leave our stupid cult alone. You know, this is the whole point. You know what I mean? <laughs> suddenly, he want me to read the Bible now. And suddenly, he don't want me to read. You know, Christian prince, your Bible is good. Read the Bible, brother. Read the Bible. You make fun of our Bible. You keep saying to us, your Bible is lie, full of lies. Why do you want me to read the Bible now? It's simply because, uh, you know, it's embarrassing to show the people what my cult is about. Leave my false prophet alone. All right? And Abdul, you know, in case you do not know, tell your friends that now we have our Spanish book out. Abdul, if you have a Muslim friends, brother, tell them we have our Spanish book out so if you like to you get your copy maybe you can get a copy for your prophet who do not know how to read his own language i mean look at those people they say to us we have a prophet he is the one who can teach us everything have you ever heard of a teacher he applied to a job as a professor but he himself do not know how to write how to read Uh, look at this uh, robe robe uh, I, you see a robe when i see your english i feel better now about my english you want to say to me are you circumcised let me ask you the same question can you show me where your prophet circumcised you idiot if you read the whole quran the whole hadith you will not find one place your prophet he gets circumcised so look at the stupidity of the muslims they say to us muhammad was abrahamic they say to us it was a covenant between god and abraham to do circumcision and then they say to us that muhammad was not circumcised And then he come to me to ask me, are you circumcised? Why you want to see? Are you interested? Why you want to know what is there? I mean, look at the stupid question. Are you circumcised? <laughs> Why you want to know? Uh, how you worship God? If you don't have that thing, is cut off. You cannot worship God. Now you worship God because you cut it off. And let me show you the stupidity of Muhammad. You see, good that this guy, he come with this topic. <clears throat> Muhammad, he said, Allah will curse a woman if she take hair from her face. Why? Because she changing the way Allah, he made her. How are you saying that Allah will curse you if you change the way Allah made you by taking hair? And then you say, I agree with circumcision. Don't you, don't you see that this is stupid? Hmm? If a woman take hair from her face, Allah will curse her. Why? Because she is changing the way Allah he made her look like. How silly. If the point is, changing the way Allah he made you will make you be cursed. Then Allah is a stupid because He is the same one who order you to do circumcision. He is the same one saying, if a woman she do that, you know, uh, she will be uh, she will be punished for changing the look of Allah. Read with me this hadith. Allah curse those women who tattooed and who have themselves tattooed. And those who block hair from their faces, do you see it? 
So why, how you do circumcision? How circumcision is a must, and then if a woman, she take hair from her face, Allah curse her. So look at this God of Islam. Women, she have to cut off piece of meat because Muslim, they circumcise even women, by the way. This is why Muslim women, they never have orgasm. So Muslim women, they have to do circumcision, and it's okay, it's an order from Allah. But if a woman, she take hair from her face, Allah will curse her. But isn't it, this is a change the way, the look of uh, how God, he made you? Why you cut that piece down your private part? Are you there, Rob? Hmm? Who is a Muslim when I answer this? How you Muslims believe that you should circumcise and then Allah punish those and curse those who change the way Allah He made them. Allah He made you, if He is God, He made you born born in such a way. You have a piece of meat in that in your, in your penis. Why you want to cut it off? You are changing the way Allah He made you. Can't Allah fix it? And this is why we see Muhammad, uh, Muhammad wives, they never have orgasm. And we can prove it from the hadith. Do you see, do you see guys, do you see the hadith? A woman, she came, a woman, obviously she is a whore because all a whore she would come to a man and ask him if she should wash her vagina because she was playing with it this is what this woman this is what the woman she is talking about read the story I mean how disgusting Umm Salama said Umm Salim another woman her name is Umm Salim said oh Allah Apostle Allah does not refrain from saying the truth the truth about your vagina okay is it is it a must for a woman to take a bath not the bath to wash to wash her vagina if she got a charge sexual charge he said yes if she notice a water ie this charge um salama um salama the wife of the prophet look what she said he said what does the women get this charge <laughs> the wife of the prophet never have this charge do you see it do you see it uh, uh, abdul you're a private wife, she never has orgasm, she don't even know what orgasm. Now you tell me why. Are you there, Abdul? How the wife of a man, she is married to him, she say, does the woman have this charge? Like what? And then Muhammad, because he's so smart, look what Muhammad answer is. He said, yes, absolutely. Otherwise, how the child resembled the mother? So Muhammad, he says, he's saying to her that if a woman she have, and different hadith, he says, if a woman have orgasm first, the baby will be a female. If the man have orgasm first, the baby will be a male. <coughs> We are not insulting the potato, my friend, but the potato present a big part of the story we do here. There's a song, it's, it's, it says, I like to dumb the skin, I like to turn it in. Ta -ta 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 -ta. But listen to the song, it's, I call it the Islamic anthem, potato, potato, potato. We are not insulting potato, we like potato. Hmm? And you know, uh, uh, Muhammad, uh, today uh, a Muslim he was saying that the Bible is the book of for uh, of uh, pornography, pornography, whatever. I mean, look at this. The Prophet is teaching his followers that if a woman she marry a man in order to get back to the previous man, she have to taste his juice. Have you ever heard of a prophet says such a thing? You cannot go to your previous husband until you taste the juice of the new husband. If we go to the 
dictionary right now and see what the word in Arabic mean as siratahu it's basically orgasm so the women she have to to taste the orgasm of the man and the man he have to taste her juice too this is your prophet Muhammad he made a condition in the Quran that if a woman she gonna go back to a previous husband she she was married she got divorced and now you want to go back to your previous husband you don't like the new one or you want to you know divorce your three time this is the condition if you divorce your three time you cannot get back to him and unless you find a new husband and he do bang bang to you and not only that you know he have to taste your juice and you taste his juice Uh, truth about Islam for me I don't speak Spanish this is a translator job and I think the one who translate he knew what he's doing any Abdul <clears throat> so anyway uh, uh, we made this video today so you guys you will know that we have our new book in Spanish out so if you know friends who speak Spanish, please tell them. Tell them. The link is under the uh, YouTube video. So when you download this video on your website, your, your page in YouTube, please down, uh, copy the link from Amazon so you can share it around with your friends. Uh, please tell everybody about it and let those who speak Spanish finally have a weapon to fight against this cult. It is a very good book for those who seek knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm not taking calls right now. It's not worth it. You see, I will take calls from Muslims who they are scholars. I am done with kids. Because like, you know, for the last uh, almost six months, seven months, eight months, uh, we have what, how many, how many people who they are educated, really? We have uh, Dr. Rohi. Who have a PhD in Islam? Uh, he he called me four times, maybe four, yeah, four. And then we have Doctor Abdul, uh, sorry, not Doctor uh, Sheikh Abdul Wadud. And uh, who else? I mean, a, a few already. And those people, they do it once, they, they never do it again. I mean, uh, Doctor Rohi, he did uh, speak to me first time. He was humiliated. It's like gambling. So he decided to get back his honor. So he said, let me fight again. So he called me again, hoping that this time he would do better. Like he get ready, he study more. He called me and then he got busted again. So he called me for the third time. It's like gambling, you know, like you lose first time, you want to win again to get what you lost. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Wadud, he made it once and he never show up again. He's a smarter. Uh, Shabir Ali, he will never dare to do it. The word is false in Spanish. Mm, well, I don't know. Uh, there is people who speak Spanish. But this is the original way to say Allah. How you can take the, the let, letter H out of it. <coughs> uh, Shabir Ali is just trying to make an excuse so he will not get close to avoid why he will not debate me Allah is not a Spanish name so you can say this is how it's written as an example any Arabic name can be written in many way like you'll notice sometimes the name Muhammad written with O, o or uh, Muhammad Muhammad uh, M O M U you know it's an it's a foreign name so it's depend the, how you write it it's not yellow it's not like your uh, uh, a name originally coming from there so if you wrote it differently it's going to be wrong yeah no the one who, tra who translated the book is very good in Spanish and I check with other people too so there's no way there's a mistake Uh, 
I, I don't care what Shabir Ali he said, but uh, Shabir Ali is just is, Shabir Ali is a, is a smart guy. You know, we have to admit, he, he by avoiding debating me, he avoided humiliation. This is the whole point. He knew exactly what would happen. You know, you will notice all of them, they want to debate people like uh, David Wood. You know, David Wood, Muslims are lined up to debate him. The reason they do that, uh, you remember the debate between David Wood and uh, what his name, Mimi Hijab? Uh, Mimi, he starts making fun of David because he doesn't speak Arabic, right? So, they, you know, they always, they take that against you. Oh, you don't speak Arabic. Ah, I know this is coming. <laughs> I know. Let me teach you now. So they tr they try to make fun of you. And now you don't speak Arabic. So what you can do? You cannot say you are, you are lying. You know, you cannot. You don't speak Arabic. And then even they make fun of you and they start uh, claiming that they speak Hebrew now. So the Mimi Hijab, he said to them, uh, Elijah, I mean, God is with us. So, uh, debate is a gift is not a person who have some knowledge which mean if you have knowledge and you are not gifted to debate then don't do it you know what I mean and Muslims when we debate them they don't debate you they play games they try to mock you so uh, a person like David Wood and I respect him he thought he is going to debate you know debate I mean I say you say with respect but he is not preparing for a mockery party. Muslims, they don't debate. They mock you. So they will not dare to mock me. Because if somebody tried to mock me, I will whip the floor with his beard. Not physically, for sure. You know how I do it, right? So this is why Mimi Hijab will never dare to debate me. Will never even dare to say hello to me. This is the fact. Why all of them, they are lined up there? I mean, why? What's what the point? You know, I am doing a lot more harm than all those you see. How many people left Islam because of me? Just in the last few months, life on air. But still, they will not dare to debate me. Because simply they knew they are no match. They are no match. And Shabir Ali, because he knew that he is no match, and because he's a smart, you know, ABN, they organized a debate between us, and he agreed. Then I noticed he purchased my book. He got my book. A few days after, he, con he contacted ABN, said to them, I am busy doing my PhD. I apologize for debating Christian Prince. No, actually, the debate between David Wood and Hijab is very good, by the way. It's very good for us as a Christians. But uh, David Wood, he was not able to invest it in the moment. You know what I mean? Uh, Hijab, he, he gave the most stupid answers ever, priceless answers. As an example, Hijab, he says, for 4,000 years, 4,000 years, not a single Jew who have been ordered to obey the command, which means to worship one God. And he kept repeating, oh, Israel, your God is one. 4,000 years, so the Quran is a lie because the Quran says that the Christian they say that Jesus is son of God and the Jews they say that Jose is son of God But he just said for 4,000 years the, the Jews they worship only one God. So the Quran is wrong So this is why I say debating is a gift is somebody he have uh, you know He have knowledge and his answers they come in the speed of light because you don't have time really to go on you know like it's have to be there it have to be on you Uh, so when a Muslim he, 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 he you know he says something uh, you have to listen carefully for what he say what I see always in, in a Christian Muslim debates is the following the Muslim guy he go and he collect a lot of material against Christianity and then the Christian guy he do the same but the, none of them is debating you, you know what I mean they are reading what they collected for the previous month. They they schedule a debate. They call it a debate, but the fact is not a debate. Everything is written already. This is why you do not notice like a crossfire debate, like you said, I said. There is no such a thing. 
I go, I memorize some stuff or I have them in my computer and I start reading for you. This is why for me, I don't believe in such a debate. A, a real debate should not be five minutes for you, five minutes for me. It should be we talk in the same time. Crossfire, all the debate. Give time to the other person to talk for sure, but you talk too. Otherwise, five minutes, ten minutes for him, ten minutes for me, it's very boring, it's very silly, and nobody got busted. This is why I don't like this kind of format of a debate. Talk to me, let us talk, have a conversation, get me busted in the spot. I said that, you said that? Oh, let me show you. That's it, this is a debate. But prepare for a debate, prepare for a topic. This is what they do. They prepare for a topic. And you know what? Anyone who is a stupid, even a person who have nothing to do with a nuclear weapon, he can go right now search a lot of material about nuke, and he can make an article about it, he can make speech about it. I never said uh, I want to debate only about this topic. You call me. We're talking about this. Whatever we're talking about, okay, go ahead, share with us. And then you say, okay, I want to ask you a question. Okay, so go ahead. And always, always learn how to flip the table in the Abdul. Use their own logic to get Islam busted. No, no, this uh, hijab is an idiot. I mean, this is this is a joker. You see, this it's a priceless, actually. His debate was really good because simply he exposed Muhammad. He said, Allah, he prayed for, not two. What do you want more? He said, <laughs> for 4,000 years, not a single Jew broke the command of Allah, which means the Quran is a liar. Uh, he said, you, you worship, you know, uh, he was quoting, oh, Israel, your God is one, a khad. And ikhad means unity, not one. Not one. Uh, and then he said that uh, 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 David Wood, he said to him, Allah has shape, and he quote for him the hadith. He says, who is the scholars? David Wood here, he did not do a good job. He should say right away, it's your prophet who said that, you idiot. <laughs> what scholar? <laughs> it's your Quran who said that, you idiot. <laughs> it's Allah who said that he have hands. It's Allah who said he have eyes. It's Allah who said he have he have fingers. It's Allah, it's Allah who said, and your prophet who said, and you are saying to me, which scholar? So when you debate a Muslim, get him busted in the spot not later so for me the answers of hijab was priceless but what happened is that uh, our our brother david would he did not take advantage of the stupidity of hijab he was you know maybe he was like uh, uh, disappointed of uh, the mockery and the Muslims laughing and etc. He is not really. I mean, what do you expect? What do you expect? I mean, I, if I, I, he should, he should, uh, he should know that this is what the Muslims do. And as long you agree to debate a kid, uh, why you expect him to be respectable? The guy he don't even have a high school. Uh, 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 he was kicked from a teacher for 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 kids for teaching violence. I mean, who is this guy? So you have a guy who have a PhD and you have a guy who have no education whatsoever and then you bring him in the stage and then he make a mockery of you. No, they, they, do they dare to make a mockery of me? Here we go, I'm here. I made tens of videos, uh, 20, 15 videos, says hijab, if you are a man, you know, here we go. Let us debate. You run away the coward. And not only this, not, not only this kid, all the all the Muslim kids, all those who claim to have uh, knowledge, you know, where are they? You know, when when ABN they contacted uh, Al, Al Husseini, the the head of the Islamic the Shia in USA, who was a counselor for George Bush. Imagine George Bush, the idiot, he hired this man as a Muslim counselor for, uh, during the war in Iraq, which means he made a lot of money from 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 the stupid George Bush. Uh, 
if you watch the debate, I don't know how many of you speak Arabic, go watch it. Go watch it. All the Muslims, they claim that we paid this guy to make Islam look bad. We bribed him. And, you know, this guy is like a snake. He was speaking nice. We Muslims and Christians like brothers. In Iraq, we live together in harmony. I mean, you, if you see how we start the conversation, I mean, how you can get this guy busted? You know what I mean? Like the way he talk, he's like a snake. Shia, taqiyya. You know the taqiyya? We talk about taqiyya. The Shia, their bread and breakfast is, is taqiyya. Their lunch is taqiyya. Their, their dinner is taqiyya. They never say the truth. If Muslims, Sunni, they lie for uh, breakfast and lunch, Shia, they lie breakfast and lunch and dinner, even with their family. So he start making Islam and like we are brothers and etc. And now, you know, we respect Mary and you go watch it. And then I got him busted with no mercy. And the guy, his head was spinning like a rat. And the funny, during the time I was talking to this guy, debating him, I keep receiving texts from IBM. They say, please be nicer, please be nicer. And this is why I told them, I sent them an email, I can show it to you. I said, I will not go to your channel anymore. I mean, you, you bring me to debate a guy, and then you say to me, be nice to him. I said, so why you bring me? What, what do you want me to do? Give, you, give him a hug? What do you mean? So, you know, no, we want him to come back. I, I, don't, I don't, who I, you want the truth or you want him to come back? Be nice to the guy. Don't don't destroy him. We want him to come back. I don't care if he come back or not. You know. So I sent him an email. I said, "Don't don't contact me ever again. I don't want to be in your TV no more." I mean, each time we bring me somebody, they give me a call. Christian Prince, please, can you please please be nicer to him? I mean, you don't need to shoot him in the head right away. I mean, like, come on, easy, you know. Come on, we want him to come back, and you know. I said, "Why you why you call me?" Go call somebody else. This is how I do it. I, 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 I'm not actually. I'm not even in control of how I do it. That's it. He says something. I have to get him busted. So you give me, you give me a speech. Fifteen minutes before I go in the debate, and then fifteen minutes after we finish the debate, they call me again and they say, "We told you, brother. I mean, uh, what you told me? <laughs> what you told me?" <laughs> <laughs> anyway <clears throat> and this is the bad thing actually because your reputation speed you now they, there's nobody want to debate me trust me if I am a person they do not know about me they will be willing to debate but your reputation speed you right you know once I uh, I sat with the with the Saudi and he have a da'wah guy, he's a, he's a sheikh, and this was in Asia. The Saudi guy, uh, you know, uh, he said, uh, do you know anyone who is a Christian? I said, yeah. I said, uh, where? He said, I am. The Saudi did not know I'm a Christian. <laughs> uh, so, he said, really, because, you know, I met, I met with him. I, you know, the, way, the, re the reason I met him, I was helping them. They, they were lost, and nobody speak uh, Arabic, and they didn't speak good English, you know? So, uh, I noticed that they are Arab. So, I said, how I can help you? That's how I met them. And uh, after, you know, after we, uh, I helped them, I said, let us uh, drink some tea or coffee and sit somewhere, if you don't mind. I said, sure. And then the guy with him, he have a long beard. He's a sheikh. So he said to me, the, 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 the guy who don't have a beard, he said, do you know anyone who's a Christian, like Arab? You know, I said, yeah. I said, uh, where? Who? Who? He said, me. And the second I said me, you should see how they look at me. You know, like it was like a bomb in the front of them. And they said, uh, you know, come on, we are not joking. I said, I'm not joking. I am a Christian. Here we go. I have a cross on my neck. And I, I pulled the cross from my, under my shirt. They look at the cross as if I showed them the devil. And then the other guy with the beard, 
he start like moving his lips. I think like, like he's cursing or something like Auzu Billah. So I said, there is any problem? They said, no, uh, we were not expecting. I said, well, what are you expecting? I mean, look at you. Look, your face has changed. I just help you. You might get robbed. You are in the wrong area. It's a dangerous area. And I help you. And the second I said to you, I'm a Christian, look at what happened to you. They said, no, 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 you know, uh, we, uh, we, you know we have no problem, but uh, we are surprised to see someone is like, you know, you are a nice guy, as you said, you help us, and then you don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad. I said, well, I don't believe in him. Well, make me believe, and then I will believe. Huh? What do you think? And we started. The guy, he got inside, he got some uh, coffee, and like after three hours, you, you see, you should see the guy. The guy, he's just going in, out, in, out, buying tea, buying coffee, buying tea, buying coffee. They are sucking tea and coffee like elephants because they have no answers and they've been tortured. And then the guy, he said to me, how in the world do you know all of this? He said to us, you're a Christian. <laughs> Aren't you Christian? I said, yeah. He said, how do you know all of this? He said, because I know I am a Christian. Now, what is your answer? And then the, the guy with the beard, uh, he said, well, we will answer you. Maybe, uh, you know, if you give us uh, your phone, your email, uh, maybe we can contact you later and we give you answer. I said, so your beard is, you are growing your beard for what? I mean, you are asking for somebody to, to if he's a Christian, to do dawah. So you want to invite him to a religion. You yourself, you have no answer for the questions for it? Anyway, uh, the, the the guy without a beard, he said, "I'm really surprised that there is a questions uh, we ourselves we never heard before, and to be honest with you, we have no answer for it. But doesn't mean that you are right. But is if we don't have answer for it, I said, well, why uh, why you are saying I am doesn't mean." I'm right because I'm asking you very simple questions and it's cause goes to the core of your religion why a person they are they are not uh, young I mean they are growing men you know the, the guy with the beard he is maybe 40 something the other guy he is maybe 38 uh, 40 so uh, I mean why you don't have answers for it and why it's hard and this guy is a sheikh anyway they left and they said nice to meet you the sheikh he did not shake hands with me when he left only the guy without a beard imagine <laughs> yeah yeah he left he left without shaking hands and you know he said to me uh you are really uh, like you you don't uh, you don't speak with respect i said you call me najis in the quran you call me filthy you call me kafir yeah, you call me the worst of the creatures. You call me the worst of uh, the, the worst than animals, and then you are asking me to speak with respect. Respect about who, and about what? Do you speak about me respect? No, we are talking here. I'm not insulting you. I'm talking about religion. This is religion. There's no need to respect anything. I don't respect the devil. Do you? Right. But imagine how how hypocrite they are. First, when I met them, they were lost, and I heard them, and they were so happy to see somebody who speak Arabic. And they, you know, they were going in direction where if they go there, they will be wrapped for sure, and maybe even they will get killed. So I took them in the in the right place. I I, I took them to the safe area, and then the guy he suggest to drink some tea because we walk for long, you know. Uh, the second they learned I am a Christian, their faces turned upside down as if I am the devil. Yeah, I will help them. Why not? I mean, if they are Muslims, so what? I help. I always help, I help Muslims. I, I told you last time I went to Europe. I, I know I um, I gave my seat to twice to a Muslim women. You know, for me, if I see an old woman, it doesn't matter if she is a Muslim, she is a Christian, she is a Hindu, she is an atheist, she is she is a human being, she is in the age of my mother. I will stand up and give her my chair. That is us as a Christians. 
You know, we as a Christian, we should do what Christians does. Right? If somebody needs your help, you help. He's a, he's a Muslim, so what? We help. If I see a Muslim, he's injured, I will, I, will, I will help him. I will save him. If I see a Muslim woman, somebody is attacking her, I will defend her. With no question, without even asking why. I'm not going to allow somebody to, to attack a woman or rape a woman. No matter who she, she's a Muslim, she's a Hindu, she's a Buddha, she's a Christian. I don't care. A woman as a woman. You have a duty as a Christian to be a Christian and to be, you know, uh, it's truthful. Otherwise, you are not a Christian. <clears throat> and actually, uh, what they can say about uh, uh, me after they left, they can say he was uh, harsh, but I helped them. They will remember that for the rest of their life. We as a Christians, we have, we should do what, uh, you know, and, and the sad thing is that these days, because everything, people, they suspect you when you do good, you know, I mean, people, they start wondering what you want. So like, sometime I go in the parking lot and I see an old woman, she's loading her grocery in the trunk. So I say, can I help you? And you right away, she will like, maybe he is a thief, maybe, you know what I mean? You want to help? But because the, the world today became evil, so you do not know what to do. Uh, and by the way, when you help somebody, this is one of one of the things, that, like let's say, God gift to us. You feel you have a special feeling in, in, inside you. Maybe you spend time, maybe you give an offer to help somebody, which maybe even cost you money, but inside you, you feel good. It's kind of like a medicine for you. So even when you do good to others, it's not gone. Not, not, you know, we are not doing it because we want to get reward from God. No, no, no. This is not about, we are not bribing God by doing good. You see, Christianity think about doing good not because I, I want to say, hey, God, I'm good. No, this is not the, the question. This is not the topic. We do good for good is the way to live, is the right thing to do. Like when somebody gives a donation, he is not donating to bribe God. You don't bribe God in Christianity. He's not a fool. This is why there's a huge difference between somebody he gives it from his heart and somebody giving it to show off or to bribe. If it's from your heart, then this is a donation. If it is from uh, to show off or uh, to to say I did a favor for you, uh, that you got what you, you know, that's what Jesus says. If you give with the right hand, don't let the left hand uh, know. So in Christianity, we don't do good because I want to go to heaven, I do good. This is not really what Christianity is about. Nobody can bribe God. You do good for the good of the good tree, give good fruits. Jesus said, from their fruits you shall know them. Which means a true believer automatically he will have good fruits. Arab call Asian Muslim Hindi. Yeah, miskin. Yeah, but this is in the like in the Gulf, correct? Because they insult them, they discriminate them. But me, I call the Muslims Abdul. I told you once I was in the Philippines, I was in the elevator and I was speaking in the phone in Arabic. And then I you know, when you go in the elevator, you lose a signal, right? I mean, it's a high building. So we lost signal, and then the guy who is a he's a Filipino Muslim, he's wearing a hat, you know, so you can't tell he's a Muslim. So he said to me, because I speak Arabic, he thought I'm a Muslim. So he said, Assalamu Alaikum. So I said to back to him, I said, Alaikum Assalam Abdul. He looked at me and his eyes opened like, like what? He said, MashaAllah, how you know my name? And inside me, I was going to explode from laughing. 
<laughs> and I actually I'd laugh. I said, "What do you mean? I don't know how I know your name? Aren't you a Muslim? You are Abdul." <laughs> oh, mashallah! How you know my name? <laughs> he was he was like, if you see his eyes, he was like shocked because this is his name, Abdul. You know his real name. So, but I wasn't really knowing his name. I mean, the guy is a Muslim. Said to me, "Assalamu alaikum," because I am speaking Arabic. He thought I'm a Muslim. So, "Wa alaikum assalam, Abdul." So he was like, like, "What? How you know my name? Mashallah, how you know my name?" You know. And then, like uh, after that, I we start talking about religion, and I took him to the park. I changed my direction instead of going up to the building. I said, "Do you want to go? We can go and sit somewhere." He have a small Quran with him, so we went to a small park close to the area. And we said there, and yeah, the poor guy, he said, this is, it says, really, it says that? Okay, let me show you. Yeah. <clears throat> MashaAllah, you know my name. I know it all. Actually, uh, uh, today we made a video, if you remember, a guy, he keeps saying, he said, why Christian prince, he called the Muslims Abdul? I'm not the one who called you Abdul. It's the Quran called you Abdul. Abdul is Abdullah, a short of Abdullah, Abdul. Anyway, and the good thing about it, because nobody knows how I who I am, and then they when they open the topic about Islam, they get like, oops, like where we go? You are talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> I, you are talking to the wrong guy. I mean, imagine you are a lucky Muslim and you want to get a Christian busted and you are traveling, let us say, in uh, Singapore and you are sitting in a coffee shop and you saw someone, which is me, and you, he is a Christian and now you want to show him that Christianity is wrong. Oh boy. You are, it, was, it, it, it is your lucky day. Hmm? It is your lucky day. Um, anyway, but remember always, you know, we, when we speak to Muslims, we should not hate them. They are poor. They are, you know, I mean, they are born in a society and they've been taught a lot of lies. Uh, you know, they need your help. Now, I know that there's some people, they practice evil. Like we heard uh, a guy who is uh, saying to David Wood, you know, well, David Wood, go and flag his videos and report him in battery on. This is how you can harm him. But this is normal because this is a satanic cult. Because they are following Satan, they are ganging to harm. You see, people who have... God who teach love, they will not speak in such a way. This is how you can harm him. What the target is? To harm him. Actually, if I am David Wood, I will call the police for this guy. Because this is hate crime. Asking people to harm him is a hate crime. Doesn't matter what kind of harm. He's asking literally people to harm him. I don't know if you guys, if you go to David Wood web, uh, page, ask him why you don't call the police for him. For this is what hate crime is. If I make a speech about harming somebody, regardless how to harm him, and he used the word harm in his video, why you don't call the police for him? For us as a Christians, we will not harm anyone. We don't want anyone to be harmed. Regardless if he's a Christian, he's a Hindu, he's a Buddha, it doesn't matter. Western, they why Western, they convert to Islam? It's not their fault. Western, they convert to Islam because of ignorance. They are left in a society. There's no education about religion. Uh, many territories in the West became atheist. So there's a vacuum. You know? Christianity is is not have an effect on them they are atheist their family doesn't believe in god and then you let them go in the school and then they fool them so why not why not
I mean, it's not their fault. It's the fault of a society. The same as drugs. You know, drugs became acceptable. Uh, today we have in the election in USA, a guy, his name is Bernie Sander. You know, he is saying, we want to stop war in drugs. Enough is enough. Everybody have the right to smoke marijuana. Imagine this election. This guy, he want to be a president. So why you are surprised to see people dying left and right from from marijuana and from from uh, uh, from uh, uh, drugs? So when you when you live in such a society, everything is welcome. Anything satanic is welcome. So don't be surprised if somebody convert to Islam. It is satanic. Drugs is welcome. Anything is ugly is welcome. When you kick out God from your house, Satan is in. Satan, he have many forms. He can come, you know, in many ways. You name it. Uh, the Pope is a protecting Islam. The Pope is a politician person. I don't agree with him, but he is a, he's doing politics. politics. The Pope is not a Christianity. The Pope is a party guy he is a head of a state so don't blame him because i never saw a head of a state is not a liar have you he is just a head of a state he do politics muslims do politics they lie western countries they have politics they lie everybody is lying at everybody And here we go. Now we want to switch the topic to talk about the Pope is Antichrist. And you know, this is what the funny thing about Christians. Anyone they don't like, they call him Antichrist. That's it. Uh, uh, Antichrist was Obama. And then he was George Bush. And then he was the Pope before him. And he, he was the Pope after him. <laughs> <It was. laughs> I mean, sometimes Christians are the same as Muslims. Anyone they don't like him, they say make him Antichrist. That's it. You know, make, uh, he's Antichrist. That's it. Okay. The same as the Muslim, by the way. Anyone is a Kafir. Don't do that. Don't be silly. What Antichrist? Do you know what is even that Antichrist mean? <laughs> uh, my friend, Antichrist is whoever denied the Father and the Son and the Pope. He does not. Uh, uh, the Pope you have today is the fruit of liberalism. He is a, he is a born in a, li a liberal society. So this is how we see the world today. Uh, we don't agree with him. It's far from what it, it's right, uh, but doesn't mean he is an antichrist. No, it doesn't. You know, come on, be, be fair and be Christian. You see, for me, I don't take a side of anyone. When somebody speak wrong, doesn't matter what uh, church you go to. You speak wrong, I am against you. You saw me make videos against even against the Pope I made a, a video against this guy James White he's a Protestant right I made a video against someone he is an Orthodox I made videos against someone he claimed to be a Jewish rabbi so don't take a side of a church name take a side of the truth be with Jesus don't be a foolish don't be a, a divider like you see somebody the second you say catholic they attack the catholic the catholic are christians don't fool yourself the bible says that it's not up to you whoever believe in the father the son and the holy spirit he is a christian whoever believe in me and i will live that is the word of jesus if somebody wouldn't agree with him like having pictures etc but doesn't mean that he's not a christian all of us we commit sin if everybody commits sin he is not a christian that's mean neither you neither me are christians too so don't be the, the same as the mentality of the Muslims. You know, casting stones at each other. He is your brother in Christ. Love him. If Jesus says, even love your enemy, how you cannot even love somebody he worshiped Jesus? So to say I am a Christian, you know, the, the, the word a Christian for me, because I am described in the Bible as a Christian, I refuse to be called Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. I am a Christian. This is the correct name. So I advise all of you, really, if you really love Jesus, stop saying I am a Protestant or I am Catholic or I am Orthodox. Say, as the Bible describe you, I am Christian. 
Do we agree with the Bible or not? Isn't it the Bible is our book? Go and search the book. They will find they will not find Protestant, you will not find Orthodox, you will not find Catholic, you will find Christian. So why you call yourself something else? And do you have a better name than the name of Christ to call yourself with? Do you have a better name? I mean, is there somebody deserve more than a Christ to be our title? Why you want to change? I mean, why you want to take away the name of Christ from your life? My friend, the Pope, he can say whatever he say. And you don't be hypocrite too. Uh, the Pope before this guy, he said, and I can quote, he said, Muhammad, he brought nothing but evil. So why you quote a, a Pope, you don't quote the other Pope? Why you don't quote the Popes who save Europe from the Muslims? I mean, why we are being hypocrite? Those Catholic, they defend Europe for centuries. It, if not them, all of Europe will be Muslims by now. So now just you remember that's the Pope, that's it. All what they do, all what they did to protect you is gone just because of a Pope. <laughs> if not the Catholic, my friend, and I am not a Catholic, I will repeat it a thousand times. I am not a Catholic. I don't agree with many things in the Catholic Church. But if not the Catholic, all of you will be Abdul by today. It is the Catholic who saved you. Stop fooling yourself. Don't accept the Pope. You accept the Christ, my friend. Pope is not our... <laughs> we don't follow Pope. You know, why people are silly? Who is the Pope anyway? And, you know, and suddenly... Suddenly, a church became a pope. Who said that? They are more than a billion Christian, those who they are Catholic. Only you see the pope, that's it. There is bad. James White, you know, if we take James White, who is a Protestant, who attack always the Catholic, and we make him the Pope, do you want James White to be there? James White, he defends Islam more than anyone ever, and he's a Protestant. There is, there is worms everywhere. Every house have a sink. <laughs> Every house have a have a have a bathroom. <laughs> all right. So, my friend, all of us, we as the Christians, we should should always ask ourselves one question: Who is the one who is a Christian? Simply, is the one who believe in the Messiah and his crucifixion and his salvation. It doesn't matter what his church is. As long as he believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, he believe in the crucifixion of Jesus, he believe that he crucified for our sake, he believe that he's coming back, he believe that there's no Savior but him, he believe that he is holy, he believe that he is the Word of God, he believe that he is the Alpha and the Omega, he believe that everything created by him and for him, that is a Christian, my friend. I don't care for the church he go to. Praise to idols. <clears throat> uh, well, I don't agree with with you. I mean, nobody pray to idols. If somebody pray in front of a statues, I agree that this is wrong. Or in front of icons, I agree that this is wrong. But if he believe that the statues is God, then that is worshiping idols. But if he knew that this is a statues, that's it. It's a statues. So. For me, I believe it's wrong. Especially the Bible says it clearly, make no images for what is up in heaven or down on earth. Uh, but in the same time, 
you need to take into consideration that those people who pray in the front of an icon, a picture, they are not worshipping the picture. Because of their love of the person who is supposed to present the picture in the picture, they are doing that. Otherwise, they are not worshipping a picture. For me, I do not need a picture. Jesus did not leave pictures behind. And he did not ask us to make a status for anyone. So I believe this is all. Uh, the root of his statues is kind of a pagan roots, the same as Muhammadism, they have the black stone. But my friend, at the end of the day, God is always merciful. God is always loving. He knew that even when they commit sin, they are doing it because they love him. Even if a picture of Jesus is a sin, they did not do it because they are bad people. They love Jesus. You know what I mean? It's not because they are evil. It's not because they are pagan. Jesus said, my friend, and if you want to go by Jesus and you believe in Jesus, then follow the words of Jesus, not the word of a priest. Whoever believe in me, from their fruits you shall know them. If doing wrong will make me not to be Christian, then all of us, we are not Christians. If there's any of you between you, if there's an angels here? If there's any angels? There's no angels. All of us, we commit sin. Somebody, he says, I am a Syriac and I left because when I study the history of the church. What does that mean, Mr. Syriac? What does that mean, the history of the church? Mr. Syriac, are you there? The history of the church, the history of the church is the history of the apostle of Jesus. Anything else is not the history of the church. For this is the church was established by Jesus. How you can study the history? Yeah, this is the early history. You're a liar. There is no way somebody he studied the early history of the church of Jesus, he will leave a Christianity. All the apostles of Jesus, they were wonderful people. They paid their life, sacrificed their life for spreading the truth. How you can lie and you say to me, because you study it, you left it. People make up legends. Uh, this is your opinions. So what do you think about Muhammad, Mr. Syriac? What do you think about Muhammad? Yeah, so what if somebody want to call me? I mean, I'm, I don't want to take call right now. Unless he's a sheikh. If he's a sheikh, we will shake him. What do you think of Trump about recognition for Julian Heights? You see, this is dirty politics. And dirty politics never been honest. So, uh, Trump he recognize Trump he don't recognize I mean this is I find it even silly because I mean who are you to recognize this is not your land to give it out to somebody else this is number one uh, Israel Israel they have a concern and I believe they want to take the July like uh, the, the Golan height uh, as a security measurement, which means at the end of the day, they will return it to Syria. But I believe because they want it to be a very tough negotiation. Okay, you want to have a Jolan height? Well, you have to agree with terms and conditions. Kick out Iran, kick out Hezbollah, and then we can have peace. So I believe that the Jews and Trump, they are playing, a, a, let us say, uh, a game. And they, they will not take it. And they will never be able to take it. 
The only way to take it, if you take all of Syria, then you can take it. As long as there's an army behind the, 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 the border line, they will, you know, they will make your life ugly and disgusting as soon as they get their own power to fight you back. Catholicism and Orthodox Christians are a pure idolatry. Okay, well, it's time to, to, to ban people from here because this is here we refuse uh, the vision and it is stupid of you to say that. How you then say that the Jews are you know uh, the pure idolatry? They kiss a they kiss a rock. They go behind the wall in Jerusalem and they kiss it, and they pray in the front of a wall, and they believe it's a holy wall. But I never heard of you anyone saying to you the Jews are adulterers, hypocrites. We said we don't agree with idols. We don't agree with the statues. We don't agree with pictures. But don't be a liar. They are not worshiping them. You know, I find it very irony that if a Jew, he did something, none of those Christians dare to say the Jew is wrong. If a Catholic, he do something right away, they stand up. If an Orthodox do something, they stand up. Even if a Protestant do something, they stand up. The second a Jew, he do something wrong, nobody talk about it. <laughs> you remember there's a guy, his name uh, uh, to weave a singer. He claimed to be a rabbi. I made him shish kebab many times. Do you remember? Who who knows this guy to be a simple uh, singer, who always defend Islam? I did not see a single Protestant, a single Orthodox, a single Catholic exposing him. They are busy fighting each other, you know. The devil. The Quran says in chapter five, verse fourteen, Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. That's Islam. You are a Muslim. You are serving Allah. Let me show you what the Quran says about people like you who like to divide the Christians. Because if a, if a, if a Christian, if a, if, a, if a person, he's a Catholic, and he have an idol, as you call it, idol, right? Okay. Still he believe in Jesus, and still he's a Christian. Having those will make him sinner. But you are a sinner too, and maybe you are a sinner more than all of them. Maybe you have your own idols, maybe you worship money. Maybe you worship sex. Maybe you worship porn. You think you don't have idols? At least those guys, if they have a picture, they have a picture for someone they believe he is their God. I believe it's wrong. But still, because of their good, not because of their evil. Not because of their evil. They are not putting a picture of a porn star in their bedroom and they are praying in front of it. So you aren't being honest. So you don't have to agree with them. I don't agree with them, but don't lie and say they are idol worshippers. You are a liar. Nobody worship idols there. Nobody. I never saw a Catholic you worship a statues. In the same time, I advise all the Catholic to speak to each other that this is really wrong. Especially statues. Statues is very, very, very and with my respect to all the Catholic, I love you, you know, and always I, I fight with everybody uh, because I don't like anyone to insult you, right? But I say statues is very silly. Did Jesus order us to make a statues of somebody? Did Mary told you to do a statues for her? Where this statues is coming from? So we copy a tradition because like those in Europe, they used to have like arts and they used to make statues during the Roman. And then, okay, we have Jesus. Let them make a statue of Jesus. And then they start putting them in churches. But this has have nothing to do with the Christianity. All right. Praying to saint, no, praying to saint is not wrong, my friend. Even the Bible says you can do so. You guys, you don't, you don't do search, right? Go to Google and you will find saying, the Bible is saying praying to saint. Why, why not? Uh, somebody will say, praying to the dead. You know, the saints are not dead. The saints are not dead. Who said they are? There's many saints are alive. Don't you, like, 
Don't you hear a Christian preacher, Protestant, Orthodox, says, pray for me? Pray for me. You are asking the saint, pray for me. Who is better to pray for you than the saints? Suddenly now, this is not a Christian teaching. I mean, I notice that people, they are copy-paste, the same as Muslims. You are not praying, you are not praying to the saints. You are praying that the saint will pray for you. You are not worshipping the saints. You are asking, like, you know, as an example, they say to you, do you know the Catholic, they say, uh, uh, Hail Mary, correct? They pray for Mary. The fact they are not praying for Mary, why are you lying? They are asking Mary to pray for them. Is that correct, guys? Is that correct? They are asking Mary to pray for them. They are not worshipping Mary. Why are you being a foolish person? And not only that, if you read the, whole, the uh, Hail Mary, you will see that this is what the angels say to Mary. They are repeating what the angels in the Bible say to Mary. Many naive, they do not know that this is what the angels say to Mary. Blessed are you between the women. <laughs> but you know, I don't blame them. Those kids, they grow in certain churches. And those priests, the priests are the problem. Catholic priests, Protestant priests, Orthodox priests. They are like gang leaders, like Muhammad. So they teach the children, oh, the Catholic are bad. Oh, the Protestants are bad. Oh, the Orthodox, you know, but this is not a Christianity, my friend. Don't listen to them. They are serving Allah. Do you see him? Chapter 5, verse 14, it's in front of you. Any priest, it doesn't matter what the church he, he, is, he is from, he, uh, he says to you that those are not Christians, he is a liar. He is not serving God. The Messiah decided who is a Christian, who is not. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. And he said, from their fruits, you know them. And he said, whoever believe in me and die will live. So a Catholic, he believe in the, in the Messiah and he die, he will live. A Protestant who believe in the Messiah and he die, he will live. An Orthodox, a person who don't belong to any of those churches, he will live. Whoever believe in me, which means believe in his heart. Not believe by saying Lord Lord don't be a fool a priest who divide he is not serving Jesus ask yourself do Jesus would like to see us divided absolutely not who is he was who is the one will get the benefit the answer in front of you on the screen let me show you the screen just to refresh your memory that is the devil Allah this is a chapter 5, verse 14 in the Quran. A Catholic person is my brother in Christ. A Protestant he is my brother in Christ. An Orthodox he is a brother in Christ. A person who don't belong to any church, he belongs to Jesus only, he is my brother in Christ. Uh, does CP uh, great Christianity promote fellowship and body in Christ I have feeling he think that pastors actors I don't know what do you mean my friend I I encourage people to believe in the teaching of Jesus not in the teaching of a priest many priests it's proven that many priests they have their own agenda they can be false. They can be even child molesters. They can be criminals. They can be serving the devil. Don't go by anything except what the Bible says. That is my guidance. It's not a priest. And you know, you, one of the reasons the Muslims don't like me, because in my form, you will not see anyone allowed to uh, divide the Christians. This is something really they hate. You know, 
how we can uh, weaken this person. We don't take a side. He is not like others. He take only one side. That is a Christ. He don't care who is a Catholic, who is a Protestant, who is Orthodox. That means he is a strong. He is not under the influence of the devil in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 14, as you see in the screen. Zinar, are you a Muslim, Mr. Zinar? Are you a Muslim, Mr. Zinar? Zinar is a Muslim, he believes in one God. You know, one of the funny things about Muslims, they keep bragging about worshipping one God, but they don't even know what their God name means. They never saw their God, they never met their God, they never heard their God, even their prophet, he never heard the fault of their God. But right away he says to you, I worship one God. Well, nice to meet you, but yet you do not know who is your God. I mean, this is what you are proud about, I worship one God? Aren't you ashamed that your God is the devil? He teach adultery, he teach hate, he teach killing, he teach violence, he teach you to lie. So let me introduce your God to you. He is the devil. He is one, one devil. So, are you proud still? And we Christian, we believe in one God. So what? And if somebody believe in thousand gods, <clears throat> if somebody believe in a thousand gods, and then we discover that they all exist, so what you will do now? You will shoot yourself because you worship one God and it was wrong? What one God mean? Worshiping one God doesn't make you better than somebody worship ten thousand gods. If his ten thousand gods are true, then you are screwed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who cares if it's one God or ten or half? Or one God. I'm so glad he's not half. What about the Hebrew Israelist? They are this is a racist group, my friend. You see, any 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 group, any group make religion connected to color, stay away from it. It's a hateful group. Any anyone, anything. Even if they claim Christians, even they use the gospel, even they use the Bible, they are a hateful group. Stay away from them. They are not serving God. Anyone he says to you, uh, you know, we are white and chatter, blah 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 blah. Obviously, he is a he is he's a he's a, he's a satanic. God is not for white, is not for black, is not for Asian, God for all mankind. Bible says, for God he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. Not because he loved the white, or he loved the African only, or he loved the Asian. Right? I mean to that? Anything bring division is from the devil. No matter where it's coming from. Division always is from the devil, is not from Christ. This is why I say we as a Christian, we should be always united. And let us unite by Christ. Not by the Pope, not by a priest, not by Christian prince. Christ, he will unite us. The devil, he will divide us. So always when you see the vision coming, that's mean Christ is not there. All right? Whatever the vision is, Christ is not there. You know, even even in Christianity, like uh, 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 Christ, he described marriage between a man and a woman uh, in a in a in a beautiful way, you know, or the Bible described that. So, like the same as Christ, he gave himself to the church. What is church is talking about? All of us. 
whoever believe in the Messiah. Not, you see, Christ, he did not name the church. He, he did not give it a name. You are the church. Every two of you mention my name, I will be between them, which means I will be the third. That is a church. So church is not a Catholic, is not a Protestant, is not an Orthodox. It is two people who love the Messiah and they worship him. Church father, Catholic. You know, uh, obviously there's some people here that are trying to bring division. And I have to put you out. Uh, no, the church father is not Catholic. That's a, that's a lie. The church father, they are not Orthodox. They are not Catholic. They are not Protestant. Those are names made by politics. And only fool believe in something different. It is politics who made those churches became with those names. Fighting over power and kings, they divide the churches. There is only one church. It's not a Catholic, it's not a Protestant, it's not Orthodox. That is the Church of Christ. Which means anyone who believes in Him is a believer, is a member of the Church. Anything else is from the devil. You know, time will come and the Lord, the Messiah, will come. And I will not be surprised for those who divide the Christians to be burned in hell forever. Because you are more ugly than the devil himself. Trust me. You are more evil than the devil himself. You are the moth of the devil. Dividing Christian is a bigger, Christ, a bigger crime against Christ. Not against anyone. Not against a human. It's against Christ. You will pay. I guarantee you that. Anyway, uh, I pray to the Lord to forgive those who try to divide us. But in the same time, I pray to the Lord to make a severe penalty of those who cause bloodshed because of division too. Because there's some ugly people who really cause a lot of Christians to die because of their division. I make always the devil angry because I refuse the vision. And any of you have a little spirit of the Lord in his heart, he will know that the vision is wrong. Any one of you, imagine you have a, in your house, uh, three people, they come to your house. One is a Protestant, one is a Catholic, and one is an Orthodox. And let us say you are like me, you don't go to any of those churches, you just believe in the Messiah. You are, you are, you belong to the, the big church. And the three of them, they are praying for forgiveness, praying for God. And they are reading the book of John. Saying in the beginning, it was the word and the word was with God and the word was the God. The three of them, they say the same thing. The three of them, they believe in the same thing. And then they arrive to say that in verse number 14, and the Word became a flesh. And then we ask the three, who is the Word who became a flesh? They say Jesus. And then we say, what happened to Jesus? They say he was a crucified. And they say, what we ha what happened after we were crucified? They say he was in the, in the third day. And they say, okay, where is now he is? They say he's in heaven. And we say, who is the one who will come back? They say the Messiah, three of them. So, I mean, what is the difference between us? An icon? Yeah, we will not let, let the devil disturb us, my friend. We are victorious. We are victorious. Always be in the side of the Messiah and don't take the side of a, of a priest. The one who takes a side of a priest, he's a loser. You know, when, when religion became a business, the devil is there. I guarantee you, Christianity is not a religion. 
But the second, it it it, it will turn it into a religion, and then you make it like, uh, okay, <laughs> we have a guy who says to you, I am going to, uh, if you listen to me, you go to heaven. If you listen to that guy, you go to hell. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> this is exactly Muhammad, you know what I mean? This is exactly Muhammad. We don't believe in that. Yeah. Bar, part. Well, I made a video, you know, about him too, and he, he made a lot of stupid uh, claims, actually. Uh, as an example, this part, he says, uh, if you if you read uh, the new translations, they are different from old translation. That's because we have a new manuscript and make it even more clear. Still, the old manuscript match with the new manuscript. You see, Christianity, the, the beautiful thing about Christianity, that having a new manuscript discovered, does not destroy what or what we we have before even if it's older it's confirmed so what the problem so sometime you see a person he might he might make a smart argument if you are a fool and to make it simple for you if you are speaking to a bunch of fool you will look smart if you are speaking to a bunch of smart then you might look the fool. You know what I mean, guys? It depends who is your audience. So people like this guy Part, his audience is a bunch of fools who hate Christianity, and that's why they gang around him. We know who is the one who gang around him. People who hate Christianity. And if you hate somebody, whatever this person's, like now, if a Muslim took the mic, and all, everybody here is a Muslim, regardless if, if he's saying the truth or not, just say Prophet Muhammad was amazing, he's peaceful, everybody agree. If he say Jesus is God, they will curse him. So they agree with him and tell, oops, 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 he said something. So it is not really how smart you are. It's about who is the audience. I can prove that Jesus is my Lord debating a Muslim. Which means I am having different audience. An audience who are not supporting me. You know what I mean? So to look like a hero in the front of a bunch of audience who support you does not make you a hero. Like this guy, uh, Toriva Singer, who is a, he claimed to be a rabbi, claimed to be a Jew, you know, uh, his audience is Muslims. All his audience are Muslims and those who hate Christianity. So whatever he says, he sounds good for them. It's the same as Hitler. You know, Hitler, he was so good for those who they are Nazi, Nazi, you know, the Nazi. If you are a Nazi, you hear Hitler, he, Hitler is your hero. But doesn't mean he's smart. Right? You know, like now, uh, and and the, you know, remember money and business too. Uh, if you if you make a, a video or let's say a movie against uh, against Jesus, and there's many, you will find a billion person want to sponsor you. The devil, the devil always sponsored the evil ones. Christians, according according to uh, 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 human rights studies, the most persecuted people in the world are Christians in the year 2019. That's a fact. And this is telling you that there is a, I mean, there is a secret behind this. Why, why the Christians? I mean, the Christians don't kill, they don't teach hate. So why they are discriminated heavily? Because you are taking the side against the devil. 
Try to be a devilish and you see how easy life will be. The second you take the, the stand against the devil, your, high, your life will, will, will turn like hell. You know, and you will wonder why, where is God? Why God is not helping me? No, God is there. The Bible says that the sun will raise upon the evil, the bad and the good. Right? Uh, you know, and not only that, if you have money, like now we heard the, what happened, the ugly crime happened against Muslims in New Zealand, which we something we believe it's very ugly, disgusting. But go and see how many Christians are killed in Nigeria just last week. They are burned alive. One of you sent me a link. 300 Nigerians burned alive in one day. Did you hear about it in Fox News? Nobody. Did you hear the Jazeera talking about it? Did you hear BBC talking about it? Nobody. Huh. Christian, poor African, let them die, who care? But those who have oil, they have money, I mean, no way. If you are a black African Christian and you die, nobody will cry for you. Nobody will mention your name. But they are Nigerian. They are in Gambia. They are in Africa. They are, I mean, who care? You see, hypocrisy in this world is amazing. If you remember, there was a, 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 a war in, uh, what the name of the country, uh, really, uh, uh, um, between the Tutsi and two tribes. I forgot the name of the, tri uh, the, the, the country. More than 600,000 people slaughtered. Six hundred thousands slaughtered in a very ugly war, Rwanda. Not a single country sent a soldier to stop it. But you remember when Kuwait was occupied? America, France, England, Australia, Canada, all the NATO, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. I mean more than 70 countries they send their army to free kuwait but all in the war of kuwait not even 20 people die but because kuwait is a very rich country with oil the whole world want to save kuwait but rwanda there's no oil poor african people killing people slaughtering rabin 600,000 burned alive and nobody care. I mean, why they want to care? So, my friend, the world is ugly. This is the truth. The world is ugly, it's disgusting. There's a crimes happen every day in many places, but because those who they are getting killed are not important important for in the standard of the world today nobody talk about them they are busy in america talking about uh, protecting the uh, global warming and they, that's it you know in the coming two years now we will hear about trump and the borders and uh, Democrat, they want to have a green, uh, uh, like we will stop driving cars, and you know the stupidity of the of, of the West. Welcome to America. The world is burning. The world is dying. The world. You know, the, the American, they have their own. You know, every every territory in the world, they have their own hamburger. <laughs> Sadly, you know, if you go to Asia, you will see in Asia they have different problems and they focus on different stuff. You know. Everybody, everybody have his own. He think he, he, he live in different world. So, when you speak to an American, American they think differently about what is the world is. If you speak to somebody in the Philippines, he see the world differently because his problem is different. If you go to somebody is in in Africa, he have different world too because what he see around him is different from what from what you have. And then at the end of the day. Uh, 
it's about who you are and how important you are in the in the in the world of uh, business in the world of money in the world of value as an example in south of sudan the christian they were fighting for more than 30 years to have their independent from the muslims nobody care christian being a slaughter christian being a raid christian and then suddenly they discover a lot of oil in the south of sudan suddenly a report came that south of sudan have a lot of oil and suddenly obama you know you say oh, we say obama is a muslim right i believe he's a muslim but at the end of the day he is a he is an employee for uh, corporations so the second they get the news that it confirmed how much oil the south of sudan they have in less than 48 hours obama he made the south of sudan a country go and read the news at that time it's unbelievable they suggest that south south of sudan should have independent in a friday by monday morning the south of sudan became a country Do you believe it? Just because they found they have a lot of oils. So all those here, they are killing each other. And nobody care. But now you have oil? Okay, we'll give you a, we'll make you a country. Sign some contracts with us, bring our companies, and then we will make you a country. And this is how they make countries like uh, Qatar. Qatar is made by, by, by the English intelligence. Kuwait is made by the English Saudi Arabia the king of Saudi Arabia is hired by the intelligence of the Her Majesty the Queen all the Gulf princes and royal families are made by the British including the king of Jordan business it's a it's a pure business nothing personal right it's a pure business nothing personal So don't make them fool you and don't be driven by the news you see in TV. You know, news in TV is the most hilarious lies. It's a it's a like kind of it's kind of a drama comedy, you know. If I open for you now CNN Fox News, you will die laughing. <laughs> they accuse their president that he is working for the Russian for the last two years. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard of hilarious nation like the American? I mean, how in the world it come to your mind that your president he is a spy for is for for Russia? <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> and and not only that, you know. Uh, Obama is the one who sold all the uranium of USA to the Russian. Nobody accused him to be a spy. <laughs> and Hillary Clinton is the one who made the deal. The guy he did not sell neither uranium. He increased the, the army. The first thing he did, he asked to update the army. He made a huge budget to update the army of USA. If the guy is working for Russian, he will make the army weak. He will say, no, we shouldn't take it. It's Obama who made the budget a lot lower. It's Obama who made our, our airplane rusted. Because of Obama, now we don't cannot go to the space. It's the Russian who can go to the space only. You see, when the Messiah, he said that from their fruits, you shall know them. I mean, this is how you know who is who, who work for who. Right? I find uh, uh, American liberals, uh, liberals are really hilarious. Yeah, you know, a, a, a liberal American is like somebody, he's just a week from a surgery. You know, when you they give you drugs, you have a surgery, and then you start saying like stupid things like shish kebab, hummus, falafel, and you mention names, you know, come from your memory. But they don't make sense. Those are the liberals. So this guy, he won the election. They could not believe it. They want to make him the devil. The same as the Muhammadan. Jesus, 
He is the most bright name. How we can take him down? So we start saying the Bible is corrupt. And we start making Christianity as if it's a priest. Oh, there's a child molester. Your prophet is a child molester. How come you see the priest, the child molester, you don't see a prophet? Look at the hypocrisy. If you're against a child molester, how you believe in Muhammad? Lord have mercy. Anyway, guys, don't forget, please. We have our book in Spanish is out. Actually, uh, I will shorten this video just to make it about the Spanish book. So you people uh, can download it later. So uh, the, the, the Spanish book, for those who just join us, it's already out. If you speak Spanish, if you know a friend who speaks Spanish, please refer the book for him so he can get it. And the link is under the video down in, uh, in uh, from Amazon.com. Uh, and by the way, the price will not stay the same, it's going to increase. So uh, we might leave the book in the same price for maybe two weeks, and then the price will go up to be equal to the English uh, book. So if you want to get your copy now, feel free to get your copy soon. Uh, the Malai, you know, the uh, I, I want to see how I can publish it and where. Uh, because in Amazon, uh, they don't publish the, ma 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 you know, Malai language. They, they, uh, I think they are forbidden to send, to, to sell any books there in Malaysia, you know. So I'm looking for a platform to publish that book. We will see. All right. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. And again, please, please, for the sake of, of Christ, for the sake of your our beloved Christ, always be united. Don't believe in something called Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. Believe in Christ, my friend. Christ is your Savior. Is not a Pope, is not a priest, is not a bishop. Don't be a fool. He's not a Christian prince. Whoever divide us, he is not working for Jesus, my friend. He is not working for Jesus. You ask yourself a very simple question. If we ask Jesus now, should we be divided? He will say no. One church, even the Bible says that. And the head of the church is the Messiah. It is not a man, it's not a pope, it's not a priest, it's not an orthodox, it's not a Christian prince. All of us, we are sinners. And if you trust a sinner, you are a fool. If you trust a stupid sinner, you are a fool. All of us, we are sinners. How you can trust a sinner? How you can put your eyes in, 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 a, in, a, in a face of a man and say, I trust you? We trust God, my friend. We trust the Messiah. He is the only one is holy, and the rest are sinners. So don't do the wrong investment. Don't you put your trust in a man. Don't put your trust in a woman. I'm not talking about marriage now. I'm talking about believing in God. Don't trust anyone divide you. Anyone who spread hate against your brother in Christ. Don't trust anyone who says to you, I am the one, if you listen to me, I will give you heaven. That's false. Only Jesus can give heaven. No one else. Whoever believe in me and he die, he will live. This is the word of Jesus. Don't believe in liars. Don't believe in dividers. Don't follow a priest. Even if the priest is good, don't follow him. Follow Jesus. If the priest, he speak the good of Jesus, you follow him. If he is speaking division, he is not speaking for Jesus. Be holy like your father. This is what Jesus said. And it's not holiness to be div divided. It's not holiness to cast stones at each other. Even a woman who committed adultery, Jesus said to her, neither I judge you, but don't do it again. Be loving. Be Christian. Love your enemy. How you cannot love your brother in Christ? How, can, how could you? To be Christian or claim to be Christian, but you cannot love somebody just because he's from different church. That is not Christianity, my friend. I love you all, and I hope that my words has been heard. And I speak nothing for the good except for the good of Christ. And he's the only good I'm proud to have. No good in me, but in him. My sin, even Paul, he said, you know, he, he said, if, if my, you know, even the disciples described them, themselves compared to God as like a filth rag, a filthy, a filthy carpet. Those are the best of us. They are humble, they are beautiful, they are, they are decent. 
but yet they knew who they are and they knew who is the Lord. Listen to one voice. Anything else is from the devil. He is the father of all lies. And this is what Jesus said. My guide is not a bishop, is not a priest, is not a pope. It is the Messiah. And if you have a better voice to listen to, let me know. And yet after that, you claim to be Christian. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And thank you very much. Take care.